So Dennis, we are here in McKinney, Texas um, at Franconia, one of the best, not only local, but I would say even national. Oh groups. my God. No, for sure not national. Okay. <laughs> so talk to us though about what, what is it like just being here local, McKinney right. serving the local area? Man, we love it. Um, it has a lot to do with my background, where I'm coming from. I'm coming from uh, the biggest beer region worldwide which means I lived in an area that was 40,000 square miles big and we had 380 breweries. So local means a lot to me and um, being local to DFW is a great thing. That's right. Talk to us about your background. You mentioned that. So you come from a whole family line of breweries. Talk to us. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it started 1800 with my great, great grandfather. He actually is featured in our logo as well. Um, he opened his first brewery, 1800, and he named it after that area where I'm from, which is Franken. Okay. So the brewery name was Frankenboy. If you translate it, it's Franconia Brewing Company. My whole family is in the beer business and brewmasters brewers since then. So I didn't really have a choice to do anything else. <laughs> you were born into it. So I was born into it. You yeah. mentioned beer master, and so. I, from what we hear, you actually have a master's. Talk to us about your education around Yeah, here. I got a master and diploma degree in uh, beer and food science, if you want to call it that way. Um, now, the ratings in Germany or on, on the education level are a little bit different like they are here. So I went actually to the university for a few years and, um, well, with the way how I grew up working in the brewery my whole life. Um, I think I know a little bit about me. <laughs> You're humble about it if you do. So, you grew up, spent most of your, your time even learning in Germany. Yeah. So know all the background, all the culture. So I've got, I've got a question right. for you. I want you sure. to listen. Don't ask me if we put lemons in our beer. We don't. <laughs> uh, this, one, this one's a German question. So, do you guys follow and adhere mm -hmm. to the Reinheitsgebot? Yes. We do. Tell us about that. We absolutely do. Um, the German Reinheitsgebot is the oldest uh, food law that's out there, mm. and it's still active and practiced in Germany at, I would say, every brewery over there, which means there are only four ingredients allowed to make beer out of, which is water, malted barley, hops, and yeast. Okay. And that's it. So we don't use any spices, food colorings, uh, flavorings, or whatsoever. Right. We stick to that good one. I think that's interesting. So they, they leave it with those four ingredients, mm -hmm. but I mean, when we think of some of the, the bigger, I don't know, more national chains that we see right. here in the States, like Budweiser, you know. <laughs> If, I like we're real, that. <laughs> if we're real, if we're real, the bigger, the bigger uh -huh. ones, the names we know. If we mm -hmm. go into a bar, or to a, a restaurant, and you right. see um, the ones that most are served, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't follow that kind of a food law, do they? Well, you know, the, the thing is that it's it's really hard to determine. Um, there are adjuncts used a lot, uh, which would be corn or rice, things like that. Right. I mean, they are definitely used and they right. are used by, you know, bigger breweries for sure. Um, but is it something bad? Well, we can argue about right. it if you are if you want to brew traditional beer or if you stick to traditional yeah. like we do it, we just don't like it. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. With you know? Phil. Well, Thanks, Dennis. I hope Let's, we are. Can we, go, can we go walk around and check it out? Yeah, yeah, we can walk around. Let's do it. Come on. So, well, the good thing on being local is you're able to get the freshest beer right here. Here so, we go. Let me show you how fresh beer can be. Switch your glasses. Oh, absolutely. That's yours. Thank you, sir. I tried to do a better job on mine. Right. I don't want that much hair. You do that. <laughs> so talk to us about this, uh, the brew that we just poured out. Okay, this is our um, wheat beer. That's for the Americans. We okay. Germans call it a Hefeweizen. Okay. So um, it's a traditional German wheat, um, fermented with a traditional wheat yeast. The fermentation temperatures and procedure on the wheat beer is a little bit different as um, other beers, which allows the yeast to produce a lot of um, um, esters. Okay. So you get some fruity aroma like banana and orange, mm -hmm. and you get a little bit spiciness in the finish yeah. like uh, globe spice. Gotcha. Um, really refreshing. We Germans love that beer, especially during the summertime. Okay. And it's an unfiltered beer as well. So all the yeast, all the goodies are still in there. A lot of vitamins. Yeah. Sorry for all the moments, a lot of carbohydrates too, but <laughs> hey, you know, 
So let's try. Let's check hey, it out, man. To hell. Cheers. Frank Absolutely. Fresh. So talk to us about uh, this is phenomenal beer, by the way. Thanks. Talk to Appreciate us about um, the most popular because. I mean, this is, it, I'm sure the wheat, a, a drink like this would be probably one of the most popular. It is. It definitely is. It definitely is. Talk it's, to us about your four lines. Yeah. It, w let's start off with the wheat, our most popular beer, with, without a doubt, by far. Um, wow. Probably followed by our lager. We do a traditional mm -hmm. Southern Bavarian style lager. Probably already more into the Vienna style. It's deep golden in color. Okay. A lot of maltiness to it. Not a lot of hop presence. Gotcha. Um, then we go into our Kölsch beer. The Kolsch is refreshing too, really light golden color. Um, unique hops are used to give it a little bit more of a citrusy and grapefruity smell to it. It's not like an IPA, so it's really not that bitter at all, but you still get fruitiness or grapefruity from the hops in it, and a nice dry hoppy finish as well. Um, our Dunkel, Sherman style dark lager. Dunkel is a Sherman word okay. for, um, for dark. So it's a nice dark lager, a little bit mocha roastiness at the beginning, finishes out with a nice dark chocolate finish to it. Wow. Um, and our dark beer is really not heavy. A lot of people think dark beers are heavy beers. Right. Right. They are actually not, or not all of them. Our Dunkel is actually the lightest beer we have in our portfolio. Right. So I think that is a misconception that you know the, yeah. the darker the beer, it's more of like a meal in a glass like right. that. But, uh, right. What I'm interested in is, as we look at these local brews and um, the craft brew, how do you think um, a craft brew, an American craft brew, compares to, say, a bigger European um, brew? Well, I think what is interesting um, in America, especially we talked about the Reinheitsgebot, the Puritan Law. Right. Um, the Americans, they are more experimentally, they are, they, they are more friendly to experience. Yeah, ex yeah, not experience. Experience. Right. experience. Sorry, experience. my German came through for a second. Experience you know? would be the European. Exactly, experience. exactly. exactly. Right. So yeah, you know, sense. there's th there's more going on. There's a little bit more enthusiasm in it, and I mean, there are great beers out there. It's wonderful stuff out there. Um, we are just the old traditional guys, you That's know. Right. So, but no, I mean, the main difference is really that. So for for tours, uh, people who are mm -hmm. coming in. They might not be able to walk all the way back here in the freezer. They are. They, they are. Can. We are actually starting a tour in just a few minutes, about okay. 11 o'clock, if you guys want to hang out. and okay. Absolutely. We, we are giving an actual tour. The tour takes actually about an hour. Okay. It's a lot of fun, too. And people are able to walk all the way up here. They can walk wherever they want, so it's, it's a lot of fun. For people watching this video, what, what could you tell them if they want to come by and come check you guys out? Man. Like I said, the best thing is to check our tour out because that's where I get the most information and the most um, attention. A lot of people come during the week and just want to peek in or, you know. The problem is we are really busy during the week. We don't have a lot of time uh, to do so. So the best thing is really to come out to one of our tours every Saturday night at 11 a.m. It's $5 a person, so it's a really good deal. Uh, you, get, you get beer to drink and you right. go home with a lot of education, we hope. That's right. So locals come out five dollars the the website's actually listed below here in the comments section and they can come saturday mornings 11 a.m just like we are and come enjoy an amazing i mean hey this let's, wheat beer that's correct if not more so sounds good to franconia cheers thank you cheers